it's assumed that particular words always have a particular effect. Give so, us an example. Well, the most obvious example is words I probably can't say. So no, we run into it. Say well, no, no, fuck, no, shit, mean, poo, whatever you want. Oh, yeah, worse ones than that. I mean, the, the, because the, the, worst, the worst words in our lexicon today, I think, are no longer uh, fuck, shit and poo, the bodily words that previously were the most taboo. Well, let me say I used to work in um, radio and talk back. And the two worst words in talkback were the word nigger yeah. and the word cunt. Right. So those were the two words. And if uh, those were like the two that, if you, and ironically, I remember doing talkback one night where we did it on the new uh, Dan Busters, uh, <laughs> the new Dan Busters film and the debate at the time. And the original, and this is a quote, so please don't to take a meme out of this, anybody. But there was a character in the original Dan Busters called Nigger the Dog. <laughs> That was the name of the yep. dog. And the debate at the time was, will Peter Jackson stay to the truth or not sort of thing. And that I did like three hours of talkback on that. So that word got mentioned quite a lot on the radio that night, but in context. But still my boss was like, the two worst words you can say on the radio, like there's a list of BSA standards. And the beauty about being on the internet is we have no broadcasting standards. That's why you can say what well, uh, – obviously there's things like defamation laws, but we can use any language we want mm. and there's no complaints. Um, but they're the two at the top of the um, complaints BSA list. Yeah. And look, what, what I think is uh, – I think it was the case until fairly recently that cunt was basically the worst word in the English language you could say. In all contexts, it was sort of the strongest possible word. Mm -hmm. I think I – mean, this is most obvious in America because there's much more sensitivity – over it, but what I will call the N word mm. has come to be the most offensive single word you can utter if you're white. Yeah, right. And of course, if you're if you're black, you are allowed to use the the yeah. N word, and that that's very interesting as well. I mean, there's no other word that's treated quite quite yeah. in that way. Well, you can see how bad it is because you won't even say the word. No, in I context. won't, and that's right. And I yeah. take it that's because that's one of the interesting things about that the way that word is treated mm -hmm. is that it's considered that even in quotation marks. Mm -hmm white speakers shouldn't say it. And I'm going to obey that because I take it that's that's basically the rule and, you know, uh, for, for better or for worse. I mean, I am critical of that in the sense that I think uh, th this shows – I mean, there's a – it's interesting with that word because there is an attention to who's speaking. And I think that's very important. Like if you want to understand what language is doing, it's important to attend to the, the idea that if one person says something, it might have quite a different effect totally. or meaning to if someone else says it. So context is very important. And it, it's good that with the N-word that is – recognized but i think it, it's still quite a blunt implement the idea that there's absolutely no situation in which any white speaker could possibly use that word in which it's okay i mean it's a kind of precautionary principle right like mm -hmm. but it's uh, i'm concerned it's it's over cautious but i should say my, my focus is not about you know particular ethnic slurs and whether they're no sure they're used and i certainly am not in the the business of thinking like look i need to stand up for our right to use ethnic slurs i don't think that's very politically important the reason i mentioned that is just it's a very crude example of the way in which uh, people are, have become very caught up with with the word yep. not with the effect Yep. Do you know what's interesting about that word in particular? One of the debates going around at the moment is uh, in the hip-hop culture in America, obviously it's a huge part of the culture. So when a person goes to a concert, are they allowed to sing along? Mm. Or do all the Caucasian, like this is a genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, there was, I, 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 I sadly, if I had known this had come up, what I tried to remember, there was a, there was a, um, a, a, a rapper in the last couple of months and there was someone who came to New Zealand, so I don't know, Jace, you could probably Google it and find the – there was a, a – he, he pulled a white chick up onto stage and they were singing and when she sung his song with his word in it, with that word, he went, no, no, no. Yet you look out into the crowd and the whole crowd is singing it, of which, who knows, 50, 40, 30% are Caucasian. Mm -hmm. So it's like – oh, yeah, it was, it was Kendrick Lamar. That's who it was. That, that's who it was. It was Kendrick Lamar. That's why I said he was coming because he played in here in Dunedin not long ago. And she um, she sung along with a song and she was on stage in the mic and he was like, you'll find that, Jace. It'll be an easy one to find. Well, we could play a bit of his there. Is that the one where he does on stage? So that's a, that's a white girl singing it on stage. Yeah. It's his song and he's playing it and he pulled her up on stage yeah. and handed her the mic. Yeah. So his song is playing, those are his lyrics, 
He pulled her on stage. She's singing it. And he goes, no, what are the, I mean, I'm not, I'm not advocating that we should be allowed to use the N word. Let me make that clear. Mm. But where are the fucking rules these days? Yeah.